This video is about my bandsaw, but it's only a short introduction. Let me tell you first about Wainwrights more than 100 years ago. They typically had big bandsaws with wheel diameters up to 100 cm and they made multiple use of them, especially for the rounded segments of wooden tires, for the curved shapes of carriages and also the wooden chassis of the first motor cars. A Wainwright had usually, beside the bandsaw, a jointer and a thickness planer, and a lathe, as this picture shows. And this is my bandsaw shortly after we had bought an old Wainwright. I couldn't make any use of the bandsaw so far, because the workshop and the house were a complete mess. Clearing the place and restoring it is difficult and will continue for some time. While restoring the place, I found panels in the floor, where the old transmission system was mounted. One single motor drove the bandsaw, the lathe and the planer. Later each of the machines got its own motor. The channels were mostly covered under floorboards. I love that sound, but you surely have spotted the problems of this saw. There are oil-filled flat bearings instead of ball bearings, and the upper wheel has one millimeter play on its axis. Every handle is very hard to move because of 40 years without maintenance, so there's much to do. You might also wonder why the saw is placed directly in front of a wall. A few historical facts. The house was built 1399 as a linen mill. In the 19th century came the addition of the Wainwrights in the backyard. They positioned the machines very clever for handling long pieces of lumber. But for aesthetic reasons I had to rebuild two walls, cutting the free space dramatically. So I will have to rearrange the machines when I have restored them. <laughs> 